In this video, we'll look at Integration Hub imports. This feature was introduced in the Rome release in September 2021. It streamlines the process of importing data, creating a transform map, and scheduling into one single interface. Check out the Import Set section earlier in this video series. As of the Rome release, Integration Hub only supports data stream actions as a data source. Check the release notes on docs.servicenow.com for any updates. For this video, we'll use the same YouTube playlist data stream action we created in an earlier video. Check out the data stream actions video for more information on how to build one. We'll start by navigating to Integration Hub, Integration Hub Import. The system presents a new browser tab with an easy to follow UI. We'll start by clicking Create New Integration. Like usual, we'll give this a name and description, and then click Save and Continue. What we see next is a three-step process to walk us through the creation of our import. We'll begin by selecting our data stream action. The system recognizes that this is a data stream action and it has one input, the playlist ID. So we'll fill that in, hit tab, and click save. Over on the left, let's click map to target to move to the next step in the process. We can see from the message that there is no target created yet, so let's click Add a Target Table. In the modal, we'll pick our target table. Like the transform maps we saw in an earlier video, we have the option of whether or not to run the business rules as each record is created or updated. This is a good time to review which business rules, workflows, SLAs, and other business logic are associated with this table or parent class table. For example, if emails are triggered each time a record is normally created, we may want to turn this part off. However, if crucial calculations are being done, then we may want it on. Checking this box runs the import synchronously or in the foreground. Most of the time, asynchronously or in the background is fine, so we'll leave it unchecked and click Save. With the target table defined, the system brings us to a list showing our table. Here we either click the row or use the menu on the right and choose Edit Mapping. On the left, we have the output object from our data stream action. This contains the YouTube properties as data pills. These are treated the same as fields on an import set. And on the right, we see the fields in our target table and some options for each. Let's start by dragging the title data pill on the left to the blank title field on the right. Easy enough. We don't have a date field on the left, but if we wanted, we could use the title field and parse out the date using the data pill transform functions in the same way Flow Designer uses data pill transform functions. Getting the date this way assumes all the titles are formatted the same way. The old phrase garbage in equals garbage out applies to this integration too. If the title doesn't follow our pattern of having a date, then the date field would be blank. Since data pill transforms are covered in other videos, we're not going to cover them here. We can also map the data pill to the field value using the data pill picker to the right of each field. Let's do that for the channel ID. And now the video ID, where we'll also flip the match switch. This is the same as setting the coalesce field to true for all you fans of traditional transform maps. Turning match on tells the system when to create new records, or update existing records. For our example, the video ID is the unique key. If a record already exists with the same video ID as our import, it gets updated. If not, a new record is created. If more than one field is set to match, all values must match in order to do an update. Okay, that takes care of the field mapping. Let's save one more time and move on to scheduling this import. In many cases, we want imports to run on a regular basis. Employee lists change, inventories are updated, and so on. We'll click Schedule Imports on the left as the third and final step in our import. The modal that appears is pretty straightforward. We'll give this schedule a name, tell it we want to run daily at 1 a.m., and let's scroll down to Advanced to see what's there. It looks like we have the option to run concurrent imports which can speed things up for large data sets. We'll leave this off, but if you want more information on concurrent imports, there's a video in this series for that as well. That ought to do it. Let's hit save again. 
And in the menu on the right, we can choose Execute Now to test our work. After doing a refresh on the executions list, we see our execution. Clicking the EXE record provides a nice dashboard with all kinds of insightful information about how the import ran. We can see the import set rows, outbound HTTP requests to track pagination, the execution details of the data stream action, and more. As a final check, let's go to the standard UI and check out the target table to make sure our records are there. And there they are. Integration Hub Import greatly simplifies the process of data sources, import sets, and transform maps. Check to see if it suits your needs before going the traditional route. Cases where it may not apply are where you need to do a transform script that runs before or after each record, or at the start or end of the transform, and so on. As a general rule, if there's a configurable option and a scriptable option, start with the configurable option every time. Now, just a reminder that as of Rome, Integration Hub Import only supports data sources. But as noted before, keep your eye on the release notes to see what's supported in each release. For more information on Integration Hub Import, check out the link in the documentation below.